sixth grade, module four, lesson 18 classwork, writing and evaluating expressions, addition and subtraction. Opening exercise, how can we show a number increased by two? So let's write this using an expression, a number, so it could be any number. Um, I'm gonna say A, or you can make, let's just make it N. So any number N increased by two. So N increased by means we will be adding plus two, or we could flip it around and do two plus N. And you can use any variable if you want to use A, B, C, D, whatever. Can you prove this using a model? So now we're just going to draw a model um, explaining this. So let's draw, um, let's see, draw a tape diagram. And we would have, let's say this is n and this is 2. So this would be n plus 2. Or we could flip it around the other way and have 2 plus n. It doesn't really how, matter how large you make each of these uh, boxes because we don't know how large n is in comparison to 2. So it's really just a model kind of describing what it could potentially look like. Example 1, the importance of being specific in naming variables. When naming variables and expressions, it's important to be very clear about what they represent. The units of measure can be included if something is measured. Read the variable in the table and improve the description given, making it more specific. So Joshua's speed, J, they've given us that. And incomplete description is let J represent Joshua's speed. Well, we don't know what they're measuring this in. You know, are we talking miles per hour? Are we talking meters per second? Are we talking in terms of you know, miles per second, anything. There's a lot of different speeds you could do. So there's no right or wrong answer. Just pick any more specific speed. So I'm gonna say J represents uh let's say J represents Joshua's speed in I'll say miles per hour. Okay, the next one says Rufus's height, R, let R represent Rufus's height. Well, are we measuring in centimeters, inches, feet, yards? Um, I'm gonna go with inches, because a lot of times we measure height in inches. So R represents Rupert's, or is it Ruf Rufus's, Rufus's height, in inches. Again, you could choose any type of measurement. It doesn't have to be inches. Milk sold, M. So let M represent the amount of milk sold. So are we talking about milk sold in pints, cups, gallons, ounces? Uh, I'm going to go with gallons because usually we buy milk in gallons. So M represents milk sold in gallons. Colleen's time in the 40 meter hurdles. So let's see represent Colleen's time. So we need it to be, let's see, 40 meter hurdles. That's not a very long race. So it's probably being measured in seconds. Um, probably not in minutes or hours or days or weeks or years. So let's say, um, C represents Colleen's time in seconds. And then the last one, Sean's age. So let S represent Sean's age. So is it Sean's age in months, years, days? Usually we calculate people's age by years, so unless you're a baby. So let's go with years. So S represents Sean's age in years. Okay, 
Number two, read each variable in this table and improve the description given, making it more specific. So we have Carolyn CDs, K. K represents Carolyn CDs, where K represents the number of CDs Carolyn has. So we're just trying to find the total number of CDs. So they added the number. So Joshua's merit badges, let J represent Joshua's merit badges, or let J represent the number of merit badges. So J represents the number of, let's be more specific, Joshua's merit badges. Rufus's trading cards are, let R represent Rufus's trading cards, or, so again, we're just going to be make it a little more specific and say let R represent the number of Rufus's trading badges, or trading cards. And the last one, milk money, let M represent the amount of milk money. So usually the amount of milk money would be calculated in dollars. So let's say M represents the amount of milk money in dollars. Okay, example two, writing and evaluating addition and subtraction expressions. Read each story problem, identify the unknown quality, quantity, and write the addition or subtraction expression that is described. Finally, evaluate your expression using the information given in column four. All right, so they've already done the first two columns for us, so let's just go through the first one so that we have an idea of what we're doing. So they give us a story problem. Greg has two more dollars than his brother, Jeff. Write an expression for the amount of money Greg has. So J represents Jeff's money in dollars. That's the description with units. The expression would be J plus two. Evaluate the expression if Jeff has $12. So if Jeff has $12, that would be J plus 12, but J is $12, so they replaced that and got $14. Okay. So let's go down to Abby. Abby read eight more books than Kristen in the first marking period. Write an expression for the number of books Abby read. Okay, so we want to know something equals how many books Abby read. We do know that she read eight more books than Kristen. So let's make Kristen a K. And let K represent the number of books Kristen read. So then our expression, Abby read eight more books than Kristen, would be Kristen plus eight, K plus eight. So if Kristen read nine books in the first marking period, then we could show how many Abby read by doing K plus eight is equal to Abby, Kristen read nine, so nine plus eight would be equal to 17. So Abby read 17 books. In the first, or first marking period. Abby read six more books than Kristen in the second marking period. Write an expression for the number of books Kristen read. So if Abby read six more books than Kristen in the second marking period, so let's, again, let something equal how many books either Abby or Kristen read. So this time, it's Abby who read six more books than Kristen. So if we, we could either do K plus Kristen plus six, or we could do Abby minus six. It really doesn't matter. 
Let's do it a different way this time. So let's let A represent the number of books Abby read. So then Kristen would be equal to Abby minus six. So if Abby read 20 books, A minus six, or Abby is 20, read 20 books, 20 minus six would be equal to 14. So Kristen read 14 books. Daryl has been teaching for one year longer than Julie. Write an expression for the number of years that Daryl has been teaching. Okay, so it's important that they give us Julie here. Right here, they say that Julie has been teaching for 28 years. So I'm going to use J because we're going to know what Julie is. So let J, J for Julie, represent the number of years Julie has been teaching. So then if Daryl has been teaching one long year longer than Julie, that would be Julie plus one year. And if Julie's been teaching for 28 years, we have J plus one, 28 plus one would be equal to 29. So that means that Daryl has been teaching for 29 years. Ian scored four fewer goals than Julia in the first half of the season. Write an expression for the number of goals Ian scored. So he scored four fewer goals than Julia. And then we know that Julia scored 13 goals because that's the other information that they give us. So if Ian, we know what Julie scores. So let's use Julia again in this one. Or Julia, Julie, not Julia. Um, so let J represent Julia. Represents number of goals. Julie uh, scores. So then our expression, Ian scored four fewer goals than Julia. So we'd have to do J minus four. And if Julia scored 13 goals, we have J minus 4. Julia is 13, so 13 minus 4 is equal to 9. So Ian scored 9 goals. In the first half of the season. Then... Ian scored three fewer goals than Julia in the second half of the season. Write an expression for the number of goals Julia scored. So now let's use Ian because the information says, says that Ian scored eight goals. So let I represent the number of goals Ian scores. And then Ian scored three fewer goals than Julia in the second. So Ian will be three fewer, or we need to add three to him to get Julia. So I plus three would equal to Julia. And if Ian scored eight, eight plus three is equal to 11. So Julia scored 11 goals in the second half. In the last one, Johan visit Niagara falls three times fewer than Arthur. Write an expression for the number of times Johan visited Niagara Falls. 
Okay. So this time we're comparing the number of visits that they had to Niagara Falls. So let's let um, A, so we have information on Arthur. So let's let A represent number of times Arthur visits Niagara Falls. And so that would be, Johan visits three times fewer than Arthur. So we're going to do Arthur minus three, because he visits three times fewer. So A minus three, or five minus three is equal to two. So that means that he visited two times. That is the end of the classwork.